Good afternoon. Hey, that worked. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I apologize. I can't see anything with the lights. So, yeah. Um, so, welcome to our September luncheon. I'm Stephen Leafgreen, Chairman of the Board for the Greater Cheyenne Chamber of Commerce. Today, we will be educating you or ed giving some education on the Sixth Penny Ballot Initiative. Uh, so, we certainly look forward to that discussion. All right. These discussions, as we know, are not possible without the generous support of our sponsors, today being uh, no different. So please help me welcome Brittany Wingus, uh, the branch manager for Cherry Creek Mortgage as our presenting sponsor. Brittany will share some thoughts. Good afternoon, I guess it is now. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit about Cherry Creek Mortgage. I'm Brittany Wing as the branch manager here in Cheyenne. Uh, Cherry Creek Mortgage, um, we have all over the United States, but in Wyoming, we're here in Cheyenne, Casper, Rock Springs, and Sheridan. Um, <clears throat> we have a great team here in Cheyenne. We have local processing and underwriting, um, several processors, loan officer assistants, and loan officers. Um, we also have local underwriting um, here, and we are huge supporters of the community, as I'm sure you all know. Um, I think the biggest thing is numbers speak volume. So what I'd like to share on your table, you have some flyers, um, local roots, national reach. Um, Cherry Creek's been in business over 30 years. They're located, the headquarters are in Denver, Colorado. Um, <clears throat> we've helped over 300 families nationwide purchase homes or um, help them with their refinance goals. We are a residential lender, so we do home mortgages, purchases, and refinances. We have a wide variety of programs um, to help anybody, and we have closed over 70 billion in loans, which is helping a lot of people um, with their biggest purchase of their life typically. So. Um, I want to thank my team. Some of them are here a lot, left early for the weekend, but stand up. <laughs> They're awesome, and we wouldn't hold the market share we do in Cheyenne without all of them. Um, and I also want to thank the chamber for allowing us the opportunity to um, sponsor this and all they do in the community as well. So thank you all. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you, Brittany, for your uh, generous support of the chamber. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. All right, now to recognize our bronze sponsors and uh, as they're list listed here in alphabetical. Uh, Advanced Comfort Solutions. A&B Bank, Coldwell Banker, The Property Exchange, Laramie County Community College, Remax Capital Properties, Uni Wild Federal Credit Union, Western State Bank, and Winters Griffith Architects. Give them a round of applause, please. All right, your, your chamber continues to move forward. We are so grateful for all of your membership and the faith that you have in the chamber. With that, we are proud to continue to add new members to our, uh, to our ranks, if you will. So today I'd like to recognize Ashley Christensen from Advanced Comfort Solutions and our red carpet committee to recognize our new members. So come on up. Good afternoon. How is everybody doing today? Good. My name is Ashley. I am with Advanced Comfort Solutions and a part of the wonderful red uh, carpet committee here in Cheyenne. And today I am going to take some time to announce some of our new partners who have joined the chamber. So first off, we have Tumbleweed Tacos and Heather Serrano is the owner and Miri Ellsbury is their marketing director. 
and a little bit about Tumbleweed Tacos. So Tumbleweed Tacos owner Heather Serrano is proud to be serving authentic Mexican food and offers a variety of menu items. Joining her today is her mom and marketing manager, Mary Ellsbury. Tumbleweed Tacos can be found at local events and partnering with businesses around Cheyenne to provide great food and friendly customer service. Call early to get on her schedule for your next event or to inquire about her catering services. Next up, we have Keller Williams. Nima Morali is um, the one who coordinated, but he sadly could not be here today. Um, but with them, we have Stephanie uh, Van Volken, Sean Miller, and Catherine Holman. Keller Williams is extremely excited to expand its recent, sorry, on the West Coast by opening two offices in Wyoming. As the nation's largest real estate brokerage, we have agents specialized in residential, commercial, and multi-unit complexes. We particularly focus on enabling our agents with the best technology and data to better serve our clients. We look forward to partnering with Cheyenne Communities and helping individual, individuals with their real estate needs. <clears throat> Next up, we have the Wyoming Governor's Council on Developmental Disabilities. Welcome today, Shannon Bueller, Kayla Green, and although not here, Alita Z Zimmerman is also a part of their project. The Wyoming Governor's Council on Developmental Disabilities advocates for the independence and inclusion of people with developmental disabilities in Wyoming. Our purpose is to assure that individuals with developmental disabilities and their families participate in and have access to needed community services, individualized supports, and other forms of assistance that promote independence, productivity, integration, and inclusion in all the facets of community life. The council is currently preparing for their Employment First Symposium, which will help, uh, which will be held in Laramie, Wyoming on October 1st to recognize National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Next up, welcome Pine Rock Realty, Max Minnick and Becky Minnick, and then Andre. Andrea Arena, <laughs> sorry. Um, Pine Rock Realty, locally owned and operated full service real estate firm is a new name, but broker and owner Max Minnick and his wife, Becky Minnick are both well-known names in the real estate industry. Pine Rock serves out all of Southeast Wyoming, including Torrington, Wheatland, Pine Bluffs, Burns, Albon, and Laramie, Cheyenne, and everywhere in between. Their main office will be opening September 19th. If you are in the market to buy, sell, lease, invest in real estate in Southeast Wyoming, Pine Rock Realty is here for your real estate needs. Next up, we have Needs Inc. Today we have Taylor Albert and Marina Maria Pino. Needs Inc. was founded in 1972 to meet the most essential needs of the Cheyenne community. We began by feeding families in Laramie County out of a small house in downtown Cheyenne. At the time, Needs Inc. was an entirely volunteer organization and was led by a five-person board of directors. Today, our mission is to provide food, essentials, and resources to Laramie County residents through their times of adversity. Next up, let's welcome Web 307 with Dallas Tyrell, Irving Mercado, and Casey Nath. Web 307 is Wyoming's premier digital company offering website design, social media management, graphic design, email campaigns, and videography. 
Web 307 is a Google Premier partner who specializes in putting the right message in front of the right person at the right time, saving their customer thousands of dollars and gaining them millions of impressions. Next up, we have Cognitive Behavioral Theater with Dominic Syracuse and Cherie Tony, a company that focuses on using theater and improvisation techniques as a groundbreaking and engaging way to teach mental health practices in the workplace. Dominic offers in-person and Zoom trainings on stress management, effective communication practices, public speaking, and team building. He has worked locally with Blue Federal Credit Union, EXP Realty, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Big Brothers Big Sisters Program, and the Wyoming Department of Health Nursing Division. And then last but not least, let's welcome New Peak Construction. Joe Kilpack with Jared Augustin. New Peak Construction Company is a Wyoming-born full-service construction company founded in 2008 by Wyoming natives Joe and Jared Kilpack. In Laramie, Wyoming, the two brothers combine their passions for building and real estate and provide construction management service that includes pre-construction, project management, sales, and real estate investments. New Peak currently operates in several Wyoming and Idaho marketplaces. The company is involved in land development, single family and multifamily projects, small commercial and luxury homes. The brothers focus on ethics, integrity and accountability reflects the core value in business that are so rare in today's market. The result is a family owned and operated company that offers the, apps, the opportunity to build you a happy place. Welcome to all of our new businesses and thank you for having me. Good afternoon, everyone. So good to see everyone. It's great to be getting back together and enjoying one, one another's fellowship as we continue to fight this coronavirus and find ways around it. I don't know, Gunnar, whenever a uh, chamber chairman tells you that he's getting ready to be educated, I would be waiting for the other shoe to drop because that is not what I would usually hear uh, out of his lips. But we are glad to have you here today to come and talk about the six penny and more importantly, the future of this committee. I'm always, I am always so blessed when I sit up here and listen to all the people that are willing to have faith uh, in, in work together through the Chamber of Commerce. It's just remarkable. We've been through a remarkable time in the last 18 months. And I'm gonna tell you, there's a lot of work behind the scenes uh, to make that happen. And I wanna do something just a little bit different today. So I know that Rihanna and Esther were up here, or Rihanna and Mary Jane were up here. So you guys come stand up right up here. Esther, come up here and please as well. So, you know, the way it, I work with chambers all across the country and I get on calls with them and they are all whining and complaining because literally they're shutting down. They are combining. They're trying to figure out how to make their budgets work. Their membership is failing. And all during this time, we've had three people. This is your touch. These are the people that reach out to you. Give them a hand. I am so thankful for your hard work, ladies. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I know everyone out there does too. So you can sit down now. I just, just needed you for a minute. But just a few announcements as we move forward um, that I wanna bring to your attention. One thing I'm sure I am glad to see our friend, Matt Dillo, who has gone to work uh, for Northrop Grumman and is the local touch for GBSD. I can't think of a better leader um, to, rep, to work in this community, to represent this program, Matt. And really, Matt, it, who's responsible for Matt is Elizabeth, right? So we all know, uh, but Matt, good to see you here today. Look forward to working with you uh, as we move forward to make this wonderful GBSD project work. 
Uh, Jillian Balo, I see you out in the audience, our, our uh, superintendent of public instruction. You know, we needed kids to go back to school. We needed them to stay in school. And I know how hard your team has worked to make that a reality for us. A lot of lost sleep, a lot of nights. Thank you so much. We appreciate it a lot. That's our workforce. So we have a wonderful program in the chamber called Adopt an Airman. It is a cool deal where people from our community, we link you up with guys in the Air Force, right? And basically you're like their Cheyenne family. And, the, and you know, I thought when, when we started that out that the Airmen were gonna get a lot out of that. What I figured out is that it's not the Airmen who get the most out of it, it's the families that we have volunteered. Uh, but, you know, we have a great new leader at, at Warren that just has recently come on this summer, uh, Colonel Kathy Barrington. I am so pleased uh, to work with her on a number of issues. But if we could get her to come forward and just tell you from their side what it means. We need more of you guys to be willing to adopt airmen in our community. So please uh, join me in welcoming Kathy. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Dale. I really appreciate this opportunity and thank you to all of you. Um, I'm not surprised to hear that the chamber in Cheyenne is doing well because this is an outstanding community and the partnerships that we have. Uh, I've had the opportunity to live all around the country and I have enjoyed all of my assignments. The Cheyenne is the best, all right? I, I can say that wholeheartedly. That is the honest truth. And it's because of your openness, you're willing to share. You are some of the kindest people in the world. And I am so grateful to be a part of this community again. Uh, I absolutely love it here. And we've got a lot of great airmen who come from all over the country. And they come from different backgrounds, different cultures. And one of the most powerful things that we have right now is the Adopt an Airman program because it links our airmen with you. It links our airmen with some wonderful families and it gives them a completely different perspective. Carolyn Richard started the program and uh, there was initial interest and we have about 75 active families now and it was kind of a test. Let's see how it goes. She's done an incredible job to find what are our airmen interested in? What are our families interested in? And can we find the right match? So it's not random. There's a lot of thought and effort and work that goes into this. And what we have found uh, is an incredible success. And I'd like to share one of those stories with you if I can. Uh, my husband and I, uh, we were at a baseball game. My son plays for uh, Cheyenne Post 6. And one of the families talked to us about how they decided to ado adopt an airman. And at first their children were just like, why are we adopting somebody? And they thought an airman was gonna move into the home and one of them was gonna lose their room. That's not what it is. Uh, it's more of a sponsorship program, a linking program, and their children love the airmen. Uh, she is from New York and was talking to the family and said, you know what, I wanna try hunting. I said, well, you're, you're gonna have to go to Wyoming game and fish, you'll have to get a tag. She pulled an elk tag. <laughs> so she's gonna go elk hunting and, uh, and, and the father is gonna teach her how to do that. What an incredible experience. And then some of the companies here, uh, you've sponsored our airmen. Uh, Blue did a tremendous job of sponsoring our airmen during Cheyenne Frontier Days. And uh, some of our airmen got to go sit on the chairman's patio. They got to go into uh, the boxes and see rodeo from a like celebrity level. It's incredible. Just the kindness that's in this community is fantastic. And I'm gonna ask for a little more. Uh, we have airmen on a wait list. They really want to be a part of your families. Uh, they have friends that are a part of this program. They hear the stories and they want that and they need that. Um, we need 50 families, 50 more families to sign up for the program. And especially as we're headed into the holiday season, I know it's September, but we've got Labor Day this weekend, but we're close to Thanksgiving. We're close to Christmas already. And it would be incredibly Powerful if our airmen, instead of hanging out in the dorms, if they could come hang out with your families. So if you have any interest at all uh, in linking up with one of our airmen, or two, or three, however many you would like to sponsor, 
and build a great relationship and have a positive impact on our airmen, uh, adopt an airman yo at gmail.com. Adopt an airman yo at gmail.com. We'll get you linked up with Carolyn Richard and then she'll walk you through the process. And then Scott Fox is here. Uh, he has also volunteered. If you have any questions or concerns or anything, Scott will talk to you about the program. But from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for everything that you do to support our base, to support our airmen. Uh, we see it in mission success. The impact that you have has a huge impact on us. So thank you so much, and I really appreciate it. We're so grateful to have Kathy and her husband, Bill, two great leaders in the Air Force and uh, their whole family and leadership here in Cheyenne. I think you heard that from her comments. Person with heart that's a leader in this nation. That's the folks we need as we move forward. If you watch the news, you know what kind of challenges we have. We thank you for your service. Now, now I'm going to tell you, you're talking about people adopting and needing a place to live. If Chief Taylor doesn't remember where his wife works. One of these days, he may need a bed from you all, so you might keep that in mind, too. But we are grateful to have Chief Taylor as well. He has been a joy to interact with uh, leading the enlisted folks at, at F.E. Warren. So, Chief Taylor, welcome, and we're so glad to have you in, in our community. So I, I've asked, I, I have imposed on one of my board members, Tim Thornell from the hospital, just to come and give us a brief report of where they are related to COVID. You know, we've got kids back in school and a lot of things going on, trying to keep our workforce online, trying to keep our kids uh, get kids going. So Tim, if you wouldn't mind, just share a minute or two with us, uh, we'd be grateful. Oh, thank you for that. I don't always get applause when I talk about COVID, so thank you. <laughs> Uh, but I am here to share with you, you know where we are today. I think everybody's probably uh, acutely aware that we have seen a surge in COVID activity in the hospital today. Presently, we have uh, 44 uh, active COVID patients in the hospital. Uh, Ten of those patients are on mechanical ventilation. They need something else to help them uh, breathe. And that demographic ranges from 18 years to 93 years old and everything in between. So uh, today, COVID is really attacking any and everyone across the spectrum. Um, and the challenge that we're facing now is really reaching capacity at the hospital. So we have about 123 patients in the hospital, again, 44 of whom are COVID patients, puts a little over a third, almost 34% of our patients are COVID patients. And uh, unless we have some relief this weekend from that activity, uh, come early next week, we're going to have to reduce the amount of elective surgical procedures we can do uh, because we need a little bit of the space, but more importantly, we need the staff. Um, to be able to redirect towards taking care of some of our COVID patients. So it is that challenging right now at this point in time. Uh, so one, I just wanna make, make you sure if you're not aware of that, that it is a stressful time uh, for our community, for our hospital. And I guess my, my ask to the, to the community, to you in particular as leaders in our community, is as you see those healthcare workers out there, whether they're at our hospital or not, they're in a clinic, a doctor's office, uh, anywhere, um, you know, give them a high five, give them a pat on the back, thank them, a nod, anything to let them know that you care, you support them. We, are, we have mandatory overtime for our nurses right now. We have over 40 nurses from out of the area coming here to help us because we can't do it on our own. Um, and they are working their hearts out to truly save lives uh, today. Um, so again, if you can give those words of encouragement um, to our, our healthcare workers out there, I guarantee you they will immensely appreciate it because some of them are feeling a little defeated at the moment. Um, so that's kind of where, where we're at. But, um, but I hate leaving on such a down note, so I'll leave you with one piece of, of uh, positive news. And so, aside from all the hard work our staff are doing, taking care of patients for COVID and for all the normal things that we take care of in trauma and surgery and everything else, uh, we have a whole team of people helping us make our healthcare better right here locally at home. And uh, we get to announce this week that uh, we got recognized and honored by the American Heart Association and the American Stroke Association for gold plus status for providing excellent care uh, in our community. So something we should all be proud of that uh, we're able to do. With that, thank you. 
I saw how you did that. Save that little bit of good news for last. So you get a clap when you left too. That's not bad thinking, brother. Just a couple of house uh, cleaning items and then we'll get on, on to our uh, program. Uh, first thing is we do have a new em employee at the chamber. So Elizabeth Bennett, I am very excited about this hire. She's a very sharp young lady. Elizabeth, please uh, wave at everyone, but she's gonna be working on our PR and communications. Very excited to have her. Please everyone welcome her to the Cheyenne community. And also just today announce who we have that have been nominated to go on the board. Of course, next month, uh, we will go through that process. Uh, but the, the nominees that are go moving forward are Jim Casey, who has uh, agreed to serve another term on the board. And we've been very appreciative to have him. Uh, Sam Galliotis, Katie Brown, David Pope, and Joe Schaefer. So you'll be seeing that in our, in our news and we'll be uh, putting some more information out about those candidates. But I just wanted to make sure that you had a first crack at it today. All right. Well, All right, the first lunch, our free lunch today goes to Jeff Kellner from the Lighting Agency. So uh, if you'll get, get, see my staff, they will get you fixed up with that. So the half pot is 3836304. Must be present to win. 3836304. I thought maybe you're going to use it to pay for all the other lottery tickets that you buy all the time. Yeah, maybe not. I'm Southern Baptist, so, you know, it's a joke in our family. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. And uh, thank you, uh, Brittany, and uh, your team at Cherry Creek. And what, the cool thing about Brittany is every time you see her, that chick has a smile on her face, right? I just love people like that. And they, are, they always end up being successful. And it's what drives entrepreneurism. So thank you so much, Brittany, for everything you do for our community. And at this time, I would ask that Stephen Leapgreen, uh, the chairman of your board, come forward and introduce our speaker for today. All right. Well, I am pleased to introduce today for today's luncheon. Uh, we are, are welcoming uh, County Commissioner and Chairman Gunner Malm uh, to the stage. You can start walking. <laughs> so the problem is I have a lot longer intro, intro than he has to get up here. So uh, some of that I'm going to abbreviate a little. But Gunner is a sixth generation uh, and lifelong Laramie County resident. Uh, he's, he's currently in real estate and agent owner of the uh, Coldwell Banker, the property exchange. Um, I'm skipping a lot because it was a short walk. Um, the main thing I would tell you is most notably, he served on the public uh, policy chair for Wyoming, the Association uh, of Realtors. He's the president of the uh, Cheyenne Board of Realtors. He is the past president elect for the Wyoming Association of Realtors uh, and uh, currently the past vice chair of the Cheyenne Planning Commission. So with all that, let's uh, give Gunnar Mom a uh, round of applause and welcome. Great, so COVID and taxation, what a way to roll into a holiday weekend. So, but thank you very much, Dale and the chamber staff for inviting me to speak today. 
Um, I know that there's probably a lot of other places you guys would all like to be than listening, listening to a government official and politician bloviate about how we need some tax dollars to do some things. But uh, the good news is that the spot tax or six penny tax is probably the most direct uh, taxation with representation. Uh, the residents of Laramie County get to select where these monies go and that's just vitally important. So to give you a brief overview, uh, I'll start with just some past significant spot projects, if you're not aware. We've been able to build everything from our beautiful county library, uh, the event center at Archer, the Christensen Connects project, the Laramie County government complex, which one of, some of you uh, may no longer want to attend because my voice used to be over the PA system, reminding you about social distancing every 15 seconds for about eight months. Uh, so I, I know I got calls about three times a week about that, but. Uh, various public safety projects and upgrades for our law enforcement and fire partners throughout our communities. And then the Cheyenne Public Safety Center where the Cheyenne Police Department is housed and our 911 center is housed. So what do we do this time? Well, we look at collections historically and we determine when they will be up. And it looked like they would be up in the June, July timeframe and so of this year. So we started planning ahead and in January with the elections having happened, we got together a committee of newly elected representatives from the city of Cheyenne, uh, the county commission, and then our small communities of Albin, Pine Bluffs, and Burns. And we formed a committee to discuss the process and projects. So when starting that out, we decided to set our ballot based upon a five-year collection, which is kind of historically how we've done it, and looked at what our monthly collections had been historically up until that time. And in that five-year period, we would collect about $120 million. Through some negotiations, the city uh, was awarded $10 million more, and so the total ballot amount would be $130 million. We then had thorough discussion about ballot construction. Over the last number of years in ballots, we've had concerns and um, complaints, I guess, for lack of a better word, from the community that there was some ballot manipulation or feelings that we were stacking the ballot in a way to help certain projects um, and to the detriment of others. And that really played out last time when we saw communities like Burns and Cheyenne Fire, the Cheyenne Fire Department um, greatly affected by being paired with certain items on the ballot that weren't necessarily as popular. So this time in an effort to be as transparent as possible, we went back to the drawing board of what we had used in about the year 2000. And that was to categorize the ballot into three different categories. We have public safety, we have infrastructure, and then we have community enhancements. We felt that this would be the best way to allow voters to select what projects they truly wanted to support. So after doing this, we also realized that we had a couple of road projects uh, that were standalone, and then some items that the city wished to do that we decided to put under the community enhancement standalone projects. So there's 14 total ballot items, and under each of those items, or under about 10 of those items, there are upwards of seven projects. So I'm not gonna bore you today and go through all 74 ballot items. Um, there are some really important, they're all very important, but there's some really cool ones that I'd like to highlight. I think it's also important that uh, the governing bodies in Laramie County and the city of Cheyenne and our small communities not only use this tax to be reactive to what our community needs now, but to be proactive and look at what our community is gonna need over the next five years because a five-year collection is a long time. And so if we're waiting on projects to come online until the next ballot, we may have missed the boat. And so uh, when we were putting this ballot together and talking with our uh, partners and agencies across the community, we really tried to be proactive and, and think ahead about what we will look like in five years and what we're going to need. So to start with on the ballot, uh, Proposition 1, vitally important. I'm a City of Cheyenne resident, as well as obviously a county resident, but three fire stations for CFD. Uh, they were one of the agencies that struggled last time with the ballot construction and many of their fire stations that they have on the ballot to be replaced are frankly older than I am, um, which I know you might think that's not very old, but when I wake up in the morning, I feel a lot older. So, uh, but this will be two new stations as well as an additional station to um, work with the expansion of the city of Cheyenne that we've seen to the east and it'll provide fire protection for those communities, increase response times, and hopefully lower uh, insurance rates for certain neighborhoods. Next under public safety, we have about eight items, and these include all sorts of different things from a water expansion system in Pine Bluffs, 
uh, that will add fire protection to what's called north, the north development of Pine. And you'll see some other things in here for Pine Bluff that really will work to address housing. Uh, same with Albin. So we, we all know that with the GBSD program coming online, housing is not only an issue here in Cheyenne, but it's an issue throughout our county. And so certain projects on here look to address that long term and allow us to expand housing opportunities in even our smallest communities. You'll also see some IT projects. Everybody knows technology is the backbone of the world anymore. And so there's some redundancy uh, that will be um, achieved through one of these projects that will go from the library to BOPU and then around. And um, I'm told, I'm not really a tech guy, I can get on Facebook and that's about it, but that it'll uh, ensure you know, reliability if we have a down somewhere else in the line. Uh, there's also some enhancements to the Laramie County Sheriff's Department. Obviously we had a large project last time for the jail expansion, but there was still more to do. The original HVAC and portions of the jail is still very antiquated and it has difficulty tying into the other portions of the newer construction. Everybody's seen the glass brick wall as you were going down Pioneer. Um, that's not actually very structurally sound, so we need to do some things there. And then there's also equipment uh, for our patrol deputies and our detention deputies to make sure that they are safe. Uh, we have four million dollars and this is the next, let's go to the next slide, we've got a picture. Um, the EMA, Cheyenne Laramie County Health Department, needs a storage facility. Currently we lease. I believe everybody's probably aware or has seen the giant comms van, it's outside parades, pancake breakfasts, a large scale community events. And we lease a space for this as well as all of the other equipment that we need in an emergency. And we felt that it was fiscally responsible to look at bringing that from a rental basis and seeing with, if we could utilize space at Archer to build a facility that would hold all of that equipment as well as the pandemic has made us aware that sometimes you get shipments of PPE. And while I hope to God, I'm not around for another crisis that requires so much PPE and deliveries, but it was a real struggle uh, over the last 18 months was figuring out how and where we were gonna put all of that. So this new facility will allow us to work cooperatively. Also Homeland Security is going to utilize some of the space. So we're working conjunctively with the state which I think is another good opportunity for, of governments working together. Uh, Proposition three is another public safety one. There are some fire truck replacements for the city of Cheyenne. We have some police radios. Uh, the town of Burns has an ambulance, vehicles and associated machinery that needs maintenance. Combined communications, the 911 center. Obviously, I've, I've, as I've mentioned, technology is constantly improving and adapting. And we need a major uh, software upgrade at the combined communications and 911 center to allow us to operate efficiently and effectively and safely in the 21st century. So that's a big portion there. I don't know how many of you live in district two or district eight out in the county, but they recently had a vote to consolidate their fire districts. With that successful vote, we will now look at having a fire station on Horse Creek, or I mean, I'm sorry, on Happy Jack about where Round Top is that will serve not only the Microsoft uh, North Range Business Park, but all of the residences out in that area and will effectively lower insurance rates, improve response times and provide for better safety for our residents. And then they also have an apparatus update for Laramie County District Number Eight. Proposition four. So this is where we delineated out roads. I understand there is some hesitation. Uh, is this being part of the six penny? We went back and forth as a committee. The fifth penny has historically been used for infrastructure and roads for public works, both in the city and the county. But at some times there's just not enough money to do the major rehab projects that are required to keep our infrastructure where it needs to be. So the county came with a list, our public works director, Molly Bennett, who I believe is here or was here, came to us with a list of about eight critical road projects that were needed in the county. And we selected five of those to put on our portion of this standalone item. Uh, you'll see that there is a portion of $2 million, almost $2 million on the south side for East Jefferson Road, uh, $3 million for Division and Wallach. And this will actually ultimately be a great partnership with the city of Cheyenne and will allow for the expansion of housing in the city of Cheyenne to the south. Again, we're trying to address that housing shortage and where we're going to be in five years. And this project I believe really accomplishes or gets us towards that goal of adding housing. Uh, another safety issue there on road 142, 
which is uh, an intersection at the railroad. We need an overlay and some work with the interchange. And then another south side project on East Allison Road. I'll note that number three is a road called State Line Road in Albin. Um, it runs north south. It was paved in, I think, when my dad was in kindergarten uh, with farm to table money from the federal government. And it has not been able to be maintained since then um, to the level that it needs. And so it's really deteriorated. So we worked and we talked with our uh, partners at DOD about if they would be willing to help us with a rehab project. And unfortunately with pavement, they, they weren't able to do it, but they said if it was gravel, that we, they would be able to assist us. Given the number of trips on that road per week, which is about 220, I'll note that it takes 350 trips a day to make the, for the county to make a developer pave a road. We decided to take it back to gravel. It wasn't an easy decision. A lot of residents in the area you know, we're used to their paved road, even if it was in horrible condition, um, but it was the, the best financial decision for safety and long-term maintenance. So we'll be doing that. Can't see my plate. Um, the city, they did $14 million and they have various road projects. I know Councilman Seagrave is here. Um, I watched some of their work sessions, but I won't uh, try and speak to what exact items they they want to use for those. Um, so I'm sure that Councilman Seagrave or any of the other councilmen or the mayor would be glad to tell you where that money exactly kind of their plan is. It's a part of their pavement management um, long term plan, I do know, though. So infrastructure. Here is where we have some, some really uh, good projects for the long term. Eastern Laramie County has equipment needs at their landfill. The cemetery, uh, Cheyenne Cemetery, their irrigation system is 50 years old. So it needs an upgrade. And then the $2.5 million in there for the city of Cheyenne to begin and to address the municipal building um, plan and whether they, it's feasible and how it would be feasible to construct a new building and make upgrades to the current one to make sure that it's in line with ADA and, and other uh, issues that might arise. We have another large water project for Pine Bluffs. That's the wastewater lift station. Again, that'll be to that north development. Again, housing long-term for our community to try and address our needs. And then we have a build out for the infrastructure at Clear Creek Park. You might not know it, but the Clear Creek Park that's just right over here is actually a county facility. It's not in the city of Cheyenne. It is the county's one and only park. And so there is some um, last bit of infrastructure that we are trying to tackle and get done over there. And then $60,000 to the town of Alvin to their community center uh, to upgrade some heaters and glass replacement and add some additional equipment. Proposition seven, this one has some exciting projects. In here we have $2.5 million for the Greenway system. I know that everybody loves the Greenway. I know that as somebody in real estate in my day job, that the, the Greenway is a community asset that, that helps sell our community. And so uh, the Six Penny has always been a traditional way where we can expand and improve the infrastructure of that. So you'll find that money here. There's also $1.7 million to the town of Alvin to complete their mobile home RV park. And I understand it's, it's odd to have a government entity um, creating and, and doing the infrastructure for a mobile home park. But again, this is a housing issue and an issue where these small towns just do not have the sales tax base or the property tax base to make real improvements without something like the six penny. When 90% of your land in your area is uh, taxed as agricultural, uh, the mill levies are so much lower that you need the help of uh, something like the six penny to get projects accomplished and allow your community to survive let alone exist. And, and that's what these projects do. They will add needed workforce housing for not only the GBSD program potentially, but our agriculture sector out there with our farms, ranches, uh, the pig farm. So it's very important. Also included in there is, I'm looking for it. Okay, number two is $7 million. And this is for the sewer connector at Archer. Uh, when we purchased and started building out Archer, we put in a self-contained sewage unit that up until now has allowed us to basically treat our own waste out at Archer with what has been built. 
But when you add a 100,000 square foot event center onto a facility like that, uh, you begin to tax it to the level that you have to look at other options. And so with the six penny being timed when it was, we decided that it was a good opportunity to bring sewer connection and allow us for almost 200 additional acres. Uh, it'll allow us to market and potentially sell, lease, or do an equity stake with amenities on those exterior 200 acres. So we can't put a hotel currently um, at Archer given the, the wastewater treatment facility that we have. We can't put um, additional buildings to house more employees and more things at the county. We can't put gas stations, restaurants, anything like that. And so this project really ties us in and allows us uh, to be a part of uh, the BOPU sewer system. We will still be on our own water as we have that large water tank, but I believe this is one of the best ROIs on taxpayer money as a current appraisal has this va the value of these out parcels at between three and four dollars per square foot. And so if you take that into account long term and what that can do for the long term sustainability of Archer and expansion out there, um, utilizing those funds to add more facilities to the Archer Event Center, uh, more entertainment options it really will pay dividends. So I'm, I'm excited about that project and what it could mean long-term for Archer and the citizens in terms of making sure that the Archer Event Center is not a general fund expense in the long-term. Next, we're gonna get onto the community enhancements. Uh, there's not as many of these as in the past, but one of them uh, that I'm very excited about and I got the slides out of order, but I'll quickly tell you uh, about it is if you click twice, you can get to it. But the county looked uh, at community enhancements and looked around at our partners in the community about what we could do. And we reached out and discussed uh, with our partners at Laramie County Community College, again, what, what could we do to be proactive looking forward? And so we decided to partner with them on their manufacturing program build out. If you go one more slide, you'll see some numbers there. But it's estimated that there'll be 4 million jobs needed in the manufacturing sector by 2030. I believe everybody in here that's a business owner, works at, or is in management at a business, will note that aside from housing, workforce is the greatest struggle and the only thing holding this community back from really, really flourishing. This will be a big component in allowing us to develop a workforce long-term that allows us to recruit business, staff business, and move forward as a community. So I'm very excited about this. I'm excited about the manufacturing and industry partners. Some of them are sitting in this room. The Chamber's obviously one, um, leads, uh, multiple other organizations and businesses throughout town who have said, we want to invest in this and the county wanted to invest in it as well. So I'm very excited about that. Um, additionally, the city of Cheyenne has $250,000 to look at the Johnson pool long-term and see about the feasibility of uh, whether there needs to be a, a complete reconstruction or what really can go on there. Uh, $200,000 for the Laramie County Rec Board. Again, Clear Creek Park, the county's only park. We have the ability to finish out that uh, complete construction with some new equipment for $203,000. Uh, $3.5 million to expand the Greenway. Again, I said, this is how the Greenway came to be. This is how the Greenway continues to flourish. And this is how our community continues to sell itself. So I'm excited about that. Uh, we move now into the, the standalone community enhancement projects. And the county was very excited to partner on this next one. And it is the uh, Laramie County Senior Center. So everybody knows the original Senior Center is down there next to the municipal building. And the last two ballot cycles, they have just come in just a little bit late about getting on the ballot or weren't able to make it with the space and projects that were allowed. So we reached out to them early on and said, can we help you with this project? And I'm excited about it. It is gonna be out on Pershing Boulevard in between the Broadmoor and Maverick. Um, it'll be a great facility, three stories, um, obviously with an elevator, but um, <laughs> but I mean, so again, trying to be reactive to or proactive to the needs of our community. Um, we're a great place to retire, but we need things for people to do. And this senior center is going to allow for that. We have uh, the ability to feed, um, entertain and do all sorts of things at this center. It has moved towards the Eastern portion of town from downtown in the core, which will allow for better accessibility as our town continues to grow in that direction. So we're excited to partner with Cheyenne Housing Authority on that. Um, and I look forward to, to it. 
I should have mentioned, I'm only here to educate, but I'm a horrible educator. It's why I'm a politician, not a teacher. I'm not supposed to advocate, but it's very, very difficult. So I apologize, please don't tell on me. Um, so next we have uh, Proposition 10, which is $6 million for the DDA and various downtown upgrades and enhancements. That's a city project. Um, everything from gutters to lighting uh, within the DDA district and to the operation and maintenance of our wonderful depot plaza that has really become um, even more of an asset over the last couple of years. The city also has a $2 million gymnastics facility on there. And then we have $3.5 million for large project completion. Again, this is a city project. Um, but I believe the, the kind of genesis or thought behind it is that using this money to facilitate an end to some of those large eyesores that we've seen for upwards of 30 years in portions of town um, and partnering with our economic development agencies to close some of those gaps. Um, I mean, I've personally looked at proformas on the, on the Heinz building and they're always two to $3 million short from making it being able to pencil and work for somebody. So I believe that the city hopes to use these funds um, to bridge those gaps. And again, uh, for more specifics, I'd reach out to one of my city council people. Um, and then $3 million for the city to be able to match grant opportunities. And then 2.25 for the Cheyenne, the city of Cheyenne for their minimum revenue guarantee portion, which is again, the airline minimum revenue guarantee, which guarantees uh, that we have air service to that other six penny approved facility, which is our new airport terminal. So. Um, all very exciting uh, projects. I would note on the county side, we've tried to continue to do a good job long term of seeing when this ballot was going to come up, making sure we have ample reserves so that we can self fund and get to work on a lot of these projects right away. We understand the time value of money, we understand the price of materials and inflation, and we understand that some of these projects cannot wait for a five year completion. So we'll do our best uh, to, depending upon what passes in the end, prioritize and structure it so we can get to work as soon as possible and really make the, the taxpayers' dollars go as far as, as possible. Um, along those lines, there will be a tax holiday that begins on October 1st. And depending upon what, if any passes of the six penny, it'll extend until March 31st. That has to do with reporting on the quarters to the Department of Revenue and a whole lot of stuff that I don't quite understand, but I'm happy to give you Trudy Eisen's phone number and she will discuss that with you. Um, election day is November 2nd, but early voting starts September 17th. There was a new change in the voting law this last legislative session. So um, again, if you reach out to Clerk Deborah Lee, um, there are some different requirements now for you to register to vote um, and to show up to vote. And I believe identification is, is the big one there, but I would, I would encourage you to reach out and, and ask uh, the clerk's office to make sure that, that when you show up to vote that you can, because it's vitally important that uh, we hear the voice of the people in this in this tax because that's really what this is about. It is about what our community needs and what our residents feel our community needs long term. And and I just it's always been my favorite um, because it, it allows everybody in the community to dictate our future. It's it's not me and four other commissioners or the mayor and uh, nine other council people. It is the members of this community driving where we go. And so that's what makes me so excited about it. Um, I'd end with some questions. Also, my phone number's up there. I will tell you quickly, I did this presentation to a group of 80-year-old widowers or widows, and they were so excited to get my cell phone number. So I hope, <laughs> I hope that you guys are all as equally excited to have my digits because they, they were pumped. Um, <laughs> so, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Again, I'm most, most thorough probably on the county projects. And I don't know if uh, Councilman Seagrave might have ducked out, but I'll try my best to answer anything else you might have. Right, group. Nope. So through negotiations, um, it was decided that uh, maintenance on the existing greenway would be an infrastructure and expansion of the Greenway would be a community enhancement. Um, I felt that that was the most honest and, and forthright way to deal with the voters in this effort to be transparent. Um, and the expansion of an amenity, I believe, is really uh, a community enhancement. But if we're maintaining what we already own, that's an infrastructure. 
and that was through negotiations and discussions as a committee. So once we build the fire stations, what's the cost of operating those and has that already been addressed? And I hate to let you down, but I'm gonna have to have you call a city councilman. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm lucky enough to have a bunch of volunteer fire departments uh, that operate independently and staff their own uh, facilities. So I'm not sure on the cost. I know long-term it's something that they are definitely taking into consideration. Um, I should mention that a, a lot of these projects and the long-term thoughts have to do with shrinking state dollars and our realization that those uh, direct distribution monies that Cheyenne, Laramie County, Pine Bluffs, Albany, and Burns get from the state, those tax dollars back to us, those are shrinking and they will probably go away. I mean, that's just the reality of the situation. And so we need to plan accordingly to be able to provide for the needs of our community um, long term. And, and so some of that that's built into here is really trying to look and address that because it's not as rosy as it is in Laramie County elsewhere in the state. I think we're very fortunate. We've done, people in this room, the chamber, um, have done an outstanding job of setting this community up uh, to be in the position that it is. And it, it's, not, it's not the story in every county. I meet with other commissioners from throughout the state and it, it is not that way. And so I, for one, am always grateful and, and feel blessed to live and serve in Laramie County, but even more as we look over the next five to 10 years, because I'm extremely bullish on our community. And I think that there is no limit to our success as long as we find and put into place those pieces of a workforce of housing. Um, I really think that there's no, no limit to where we can go. Awesome, I might make my one o'clock. All right, thank you guys very much. All right. Thank you, Con Commissioner Mom. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure there's a joke in there about your cell phone number, but we'll do that later. Uh, um, anyway, thank you for being such an enthusiastic leader. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you all who have joined us today in person and virtually at the, uh, uh, our luncheon today. We look forward to seeing you all in October. Remembering October, um, start, actually it's the first full week in October is business week. So remember Business Week, in fact, on October 5th, uh, we will be recognizing Jim and Peggy Hearns in our Circle of Champions uh, honoree. So make sure to uh, sign up for that luncheon. That would be fantastic. And uh, apparently it's the start of uh, football season. So uh, go Pokes. There you go.